Have you ever wondered why some fairy are bound to the earth, some to the sky, and others to the waters of sea, lakes, and rivers? Well, in today's video, I'll tell you one theory on how this came to be and share a story of one of the most extraordinary of fairies, the Blue Men of the Minch. But first, and in order to appreciate the physical strength of the Blue Men, you must appreciate the treacherous waters in which they hold dominion. The Minch separates the Scottish mainland from the northwesterly islands of Lewis and Harris. It is a wild stretch of water where even the most seasoned mariner has cause to be wary, for storms and squalls blow up to toss boats here and there, and a careless skipper might easily steer his ship to splinters upon the skerries. The water is home to porpoises, dolphins and minke whales, and the air is alive with fulmers and gannets, puffins, kittiwakes and razorbills. The great arctic skewer is the scourge of the skies, but every now and then even these great brown beasts are dwarfed completely by a soaring sea eagle, with a wingspan so great it seems to block out the very sun. Many lives have been lost in the minch, and stories of hauntings and disappearances are carried on the waves. These are human stories, though, and the minch is the domain of otherworldly beings too. A legend says that many generations ago, a host of angels fell from heaven to land upon the earth. Some of these angels went to dwell under the ground in hills with doors that open, sometimes into the human world. They are known as the little people, or the fairies. A second group of angels were unwilling to give up their gift of flight, and so they took up residence in the skies. They are the merry dancers, and they may be seen over Scotland and north to Scandinavia on cold winter nights as they flicker here and there, green and pink and blue, and gold too. In Latin they are called the Aurora Borealis, and in English the Northern Lights. Still more of the fairies fell into the sea, and they became the blue men of the minch. Like the rest of their fallen kindred, they have little love for mortal creatures, and no sailor wishes to meet them as he crosses the treacherous waters of the strait. It is said that the blue men live in caves below the deep waters of the Shiants, and the waters above their home flow fast and fierce regardless of the weather, dragging ships down to their doom. They are coloured grey-blue like the sea, with long faces and grey beards. There was once a group of sailors were crossing the Minch, when they spied a strange creature following in their wake. At first they mistook it for a porpoise, for it leaped and twisted in the waves, poking its head clear of the spray to flip and twist around. They saw that it looked like a human, only blue, but it swam and skipped along in the wild wake of the ship at a speed no mortal creature could possibly achieve. The men fetched a net and, with some difficulty, they cast it out behind the boat and caught the skipping creature in its folds. They hauled the net back on board with the creature inside and laid it out on the deck. Now that it was close enough to inspect, they saw that they were right and the creature was indeed shaped like a human, but it was as blue as the waves themselves. It lay trapped in the net and glared at them with its green-grey eyes. We should throw it back where it came from, one man said. No good can come of having such a creature on board. No, said the skipper. We don't know what it means to do. It may drag us down with it into the deeps. We should take it home and ask the minister what to do a third man said. They all nodded at that, despite their misgivings, for their minister was the wisest man they knew. 
We can't leave it there in a net like a herring till we get home, said another man. That's no way to treat a magical creature. No, it is not, said the skipper. But still we must bind its hands and its feet with rope. He peered at the creature. If you don't struggle, he said, we won't hurt you. One man fetched a rope while the others took the creature from the net and held it still on the deck. They bound its hands and its feet, and it lay there like a landed fish, although it could breathe perfectly well out of the water. It glared, but it did not speak. It jerked its head in anger, and the men heard an ominous roll of thunder overhead. The sky grew dark, and there was a smell in the air that spoke of danger to come. The men felt fear in the pit of their bellies, and they hurried to turn the boat and head back to harbour. The wind was rising as they had never heard it rise before, and they struggled to reef the sails ready to weather the storm. Some little way on, while the full circle of the sea still surrounded them, and the spray blinded them, and there was no land to see in any direction, One of the men called out in alarm. The others abandoned their tasks and lurched across the slippery deck to join him in the stern. He pointed into the waves and they peered through the darkening afternoon. Two blue shapes were bouncing through the angry sea, rising proud from the spray, screeching and laughing in wild abandon. Heaven help us! the skipper cried. There are two more of them. Over the roar of the waves, the sailors heard the blue men call to one another. Donald will be one man, one of them cried to the other. Duncan will be the other, his companion called back. What do they mean to do? the skipper cried. What do they plan to do? Before the sailors had a chance to answer, The blue man on the deck leaped on his feet as though the ropes that bound him were woven from nothing stronger than sand. He shouted in a deep roar, Donald's voice I hear and Duncan too is near, but no need of help has mighty Ian Moore. Then the blue man called Ian Moore ran past the sailors. He cleared the side of the boat and landed with a great splash by his fellows in the sea. He shook an angry fist at the sailors. Count yourselves lucky lads, he roared, for you would never have made it home with me. Then he and his friends leaped out of the water like porpoises, turned in mid-air and headed back the way they had come. As soon as they were out of sight, the wind died down and the sea grew calm again. Sightings of the blue men in the waters of the Minch have been reported for many centuries. Numerous sailors have recounted how they have nervously watched as the blue men slowly and silently followed their boat describing their bodies as being half out of the water and always just out of reach. Well, I'm not sure why anyone would want to capture a blue man of the minch. Well, here's a description of the blue men that I particularly like, and it was published in 1917. In summer weather, they skim lightly below the surface, but when the wind is high, they revel in the storm and swim with their heads erect, splashing the waters with mad delight. Sometimes they are seen floating from the waist out to sea, and sometimes turning round like porpoises when they dive. Well, I hope you enjoyed getting to know the blue men of the Minch. I'd like to send a big-hearted thank you to everyone who has subscribed already. I really love seeing some familiar names in there. And if you haven't subscribed, please do click subscribe and hit the notifications bell. 
This helps me enormously in getting YouTube to notice my little channel and recommend it to more like-minded people. Well, until next time, stay curious and be kind. Cheerio!